Fair Plumber for Robots Everywhere. I am here to show you how to use a solid state laser. This is a 1 watt laser to etch a printed circuit board. This is a little printed circuit board right here. And we're just going to do a test pattern on it. We're going to etch a hexagon on it. And then I will show you that it etches correctly. Because so I'm going to try to do the whole thing in real time. So we're going to need we're going to need some ferrochloride. This is pretty standard for use for, for for PCBs. We're going to need a little vat. Now what I have here is a little odd because what I have is a peristaltic pump. This is like an aquarium pump to drip the ferrochloride on top of the board. I have no. I have found that this makes it go a lot faster. Well, what we have here, we have a bowl of water and here we have an empty bowl which we will fill with uh, nail polish remover. And of course we have nail polish. You can use pretty much any nail polish you like, just get the cheapy stuff. So first thing you want to do is you want to paint the PCB, the copper, the copper board, it's not a PCB yet. You don't have to be particularly accurate in doing so, you can be a little sloppy. Just a small layer of the stuff will protect the copper. What's the idea here? The idea is very simple. The idea is that the laser will abrade or vaporize the nail polish and then the remaining nail polish will protect the copper from the fur chloride. It's pretty much what you do normally with a PCB. The only difference is that you can do it fairly quickly. There we go. In fact, I'm trying to think, why don't I, can I put a timer on this? So, I'll look like it, not easily. So that's the, that's the stuff. We put it on our printer. You can use an engraver, you can use a 3D printer with a laser attached, you can use pretty much anything you like really. We load the file. Now you can use LaserWeb, you can use uh, GRBL. Uh, I personally use Printerface, but that's because this is a bit of an old printer. So I decided to go with what I know works. So that's on the thing. Let's adjust the z-axis to compensate for the thickness of the board. And let's hit print. Now what this will do is that it will, like I said, it will abrade the nail polish and then it will bounce off the copper obviously. Now I don't want to keep the phone camera trained at the laser for too long so I'm going to time lapse here and I'll see you when this thing is about to finish. Alright, so that's the last last few goes here. This normally doesn't take very long, depends on how powerful your laser is, you may have to do a few passes again. This guy is being run at low power because I want to show a method that can be used for you know smaller lasers you can probably just use a, an engraver you can get on eBay so this is the result and what we're gonna do now we're gonna put in the ferrochloride this one has been used a few times already you can see it's kind of dark and what I like to do is I got my little vat here and I want to show you something this is ferrochloride it's at 42 percent concentration and it's perfectly safe to even put your finger in. What I like to do to uh, speed up the process is force it to move a little bit by using this peristaltic pump. It has to be a peristaltic pump because that way the only thing that ever touches the ferrochloride is, um, is the rubber hose instead of uh, any metal. 
So in a few minutes, and I'm actually going to count these. It's 2.30 now. And uh, I'm going to, so we're going to actually see starting to work. I'm going to count how many minutes it takes for us to get this thing to where it wants to be. In the meantime, I'm going to put something under it. So on this level. There we go. Now the drip here has two effects. One, it keeps it pushes the pushes it down until it allows some movement. The idea here is simply that it will speed the reaction up a little bit. You can actually see it here starting to work. It's been 20 minutes, and uh, now it's time to see what happened to this thing. So first off, we're going to put it in water, because I don't want the ferrochloride to interact with the nail polish remover. Second, we're going to wash the stuff off. Now to clean it you can use a toothbrush or something or just let it soak a little bit. And we see the result here. And now, of course, we need to get rid of the nail polish remover. Now, one thing to remember is that this stuff and this stuff, you can use it a few times. The water just has a tiny little bit of ferrochloride in it. It's inert, essentially. You can flush it later. The nail polish, you get rid like you would with the nail polish. Again, this picked up some of the color, obviously, because it is gone. So what you want to do next is you want to give it a um, a bit of time, a bit of time to, for this for this guy to dry up, and you want to leave this alone. You can probably use this three or four times too.